Cherry, I have a strange little happening here. There, n- there are a number of butterflies or moths in my house that are attached to a polished wooden surface. They're about one inch square, brown wing, then with a brown cream fleck, then cream followed by cream brown fleck. This is the first time these wee creatures have been here, though I've been in the house for 20 years. There's some odd things happening in the world today. Animal behaviour is very strange. There's all kinds of reports about all... Now, the geese is only the start of it. Yeah. Now there's everything's going haywire. I'll tell you what I first noticed. What? And we talked about this before. Uh-huh. I noticed that the birds... You know the uh, birds? Yes. Are, I know what the, birds are, yeah. They're yeah. no longer afraid of you. When, you. when you walk towards them, they just sort of look up at you and give you a dirty look. So if they say, what are you doing here? No, they don't, they don't fly away from you anymore. They'll walk in front of you. I walk down a, a, a laneway from time to time coming down here. Yes. And, you know, and the wee bird be up in the tree and he just flutter down in front of you and just stand there. Just bra- brazen birds? Just, and you have to walk around them. Are they, have they got an attitude? There's a, big, a, there's a big wood pigeon. I think he wants to sort of stick ahead in me. You know, them, you know the big heavy chest know, that they yeah. have? Yeah. You know, and he sort of, he struts around the laneway. So if they say, what are you doing here, Kyle? You know, brrr, brrr. What are you doing? Brr, brr, you know. I see you speak pigeon. Yeah, you know. Pigeon English. Hmm. Listen, I wonder, uh, now you had a similar experience with the cat. The animal kingdom seems to be turning on you. I think it's, an, it's got something to do with ele- electromagnetivity. Did you the, not find that? No. Birds. No, um, there's a crane that lives outside, a heron, basically, yeah. uh, lives outside our house. His name is Sydney. I call him Sydney. He seems right. to prefer that. And he doesn't fly away anymore. Yeah, he's there. You are. No, that's true because, you know, when the, the crane stands there at the water's edge and he knows you're behind you because he's got this kind of 380, 360 vision mm, mm. and he's standing, when his head is really still, he knows he's watching you. You know, he you know that he's watching you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, once you get to a certain, about like 20 yards, he's off, he's out of there. Yeah, it just lets you get close enough. Yeah, and then he goes. Because if they say, I'm not afraid of but you. But now you can nearly go up and touch it. Yeah. He just stands there and goes, come on, bring, yeah, bring come it on. on. Hey. Bring it on. That's right. Show me what you've got, white man. Yeah. You know? Anyway, that's good. Do you remember the time cows, was, cows would run away from you in the field too? No, they come up to you and they say, hey, what's around. cooking, what's yeah. cooking, guys? What's going on yeah. here? Yeah, what what's you going on? What are you doing in my field? I was talking to the animals the other day. So? I was. I was talking to sheep this time. Ah. Uh-huh. I was saying, would you not get a, to- a toilet roll there, boys, and do something yourselves? I said to myself, look at that wool there, for God's sake. Who would wear a jumper with that on it? I said to myself. Great shows last week, kid. Great shows which greatly aided the pound in its unfair fight with the euro and the dollar. The pound has rallied, yelled Tommy, my cat. The dollar is holding its own. Brian Cowan, Angela Merkel, Nicholas Sarkozy, Sylvia Berlusconi, and your man here. Your euro is taking a bit of a beating. Your euro is taking a hell of a beating. I clapped my hands, two Dutch lodgers I had recently taken in and cried. My drawers are shaking. This great fiscal news has affected the pound in my pocket. Tommy, my cat, looked at me with a gormless look on his face, remarkably reminding me of Adrian Childs, and said, Britain owes a shed lot of money, doesn't it? It sure does, I said. Billions and billions and even more billions. To whom or to who does Britain owe this money to? To the banks, I said. That cannot be, said Tommy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did this fiscal handling not come about because the bank went bust as a result of greed, gross stupidity and carelessness in a fiscal manner? So how can we owe money to the people who got us into the mess in the first place? Once again, it had taken a simple lump of a cat to reveal that the emperor wears no clothes and was naked as a jaybird. Ah, Tommy, 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 I said. There's no sense or logic in this situation we are finding ourselves in. One way or another... We're going back to geek to Keynesian times. The Conservative Party will make sure of it when they get rid of the little plague. There will be small boys up chimneys. Once again, we shall hear the cry of the knife grinder and the rag and bone man. Fresh hen! Fresh hen! Did you ever hear that? Oh, I. Fresh, Fresh hen! Mm. That used to be the cry one heard in the street. You don't hear that anymore. You hear, ah! Somebody being stabbed up an alleyway for drugs. It could be worse, said Tommy. Had we gone back to the 1970s, everybody would be wearing flared trousers. Release that fat obese guy! I yelled to a gang of hoodies who were pulling Stephen Nolding around Belfast in a cart. Tommy is not a plaything or a figure of fun! He is a man! Prick him! See how he bleeds! Shut your gob bucket back! 
roared Nolan. This is my idea. I get 75% of the treats. Oh, the things a fat man will stoop to to stuff his pie hole. Penny for the guy. Penny for the biggest guy in the country! <coughs> I'd done myself in there nearly. <coughs> Excuse me. I know you say you're ready to change, but I need to get it down on paper. It's in your face.